Today's message, if applied correctly, can change your life. Whether you're seven years old or whether you're 65 years old, this message could change your life. And you're saying, well, Pastor Bruce, that's pretty arrogant of you to say that what I'm going to say over the next 30 minutes can change your life. But it is. It is very confident in my soul that the simple thing that we need to do within our own life are the things that maybe your parents taught you when you were a child. Just like my parents tried to teach me. My dad had this gigantic garden. And I hated that stinking garden. Because when I was about 8 years old to about 15 years old, every day, dad would say, get into the garden. Every day when my dad got home at 4.30 every afternoon, we were in the garden. And I would say, why do you have such a big garden? Because every day, he said, I need you to pull what? Weeds. So as a young boy, I thought, just get rid of the weeds. Just pull the weeds and put the dirt on top of the weeds. And the old man's not going to see the weeds because the weeds are not visible. So I would do whatever I had to do just to pull the weed and put the dirt on top of the roots. And I wouldn't get down in there. But my dad would come home and he said, Bruce, get out of here. Oh, man, I got busted again. He said, you need to get down into the dirt with a t utensil to get the root out of the ground. Until you get the root of the weed out of the ground, the weed will continue to come back. Now, it may not come back tomorrow. And it may be a while before you see visible signs of the root. But until you get the root out of the ground, the weed will continue to come back. I hated that garden. It took all of my time. But my dad told me, if you do not weed the garden, you do not go to the pool. And my dad, we lived about two miles outside of town, and my dad would not come pick me up at one o'clock to go to the pool. We had to walk those two miles to go to the pool. And my dad would sometimes come home over lunch hour to make sure that we did our job before I could go to the pool and I could have fun. One day, my dad woke me up early, and I don't know why they wake up. I'm, I was quiet, and I was content. Just let me sleep, but no. 7.30, get up, Bruce. I said, ah. I got to go to work, and here's what I want you to do. We have this wood chip pile in the back, and I need you to pull the weeds out of the flower garden, and then I need you to put the wood chips, the mulch, if you would, on top of it. All right, Dad, I'll get it done. And I'll come back at noon to pick you up so you can go to the pool, so get this done this morning. But guess what I did? I went right back to sleep until about 11 o'clock. Some kids give me an amen on that. But I got woke up at 11 o'clock and said, oh man, I've got an hour. I've got to pull the weeds and then I've got to put the bolt on top to make it look good. So what did Bruce do? Let's just make a shortcut. Let's get pulling the weeds because if I don't pull the weeds, I can just put the mulch on top of it. Dad would come home and Dad would, oh Bruce, you did a great job. Well, my thinking and my old man's thinking were not the same. Because he moved the wood to make sure that the weeds were pulled. And guess what I did not do that day? I did not go to the pool. And my booty was sore. Because my old man demanded things to get done. And pulling the weeds was one of the things that he demanded. Why is that in our spiritual life? Why do we do that same thing? Why do we try to hide the weeds? We, Saturday night, we put the mulch on top of the weeds of our life. So we come to church and we look like we have a beautiful flower garden. But the weeds are under the mulch. And until we pull the weeds away from the flower bed, that mulch is a covering just like church would be a covering. But sooner or later, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, that weed is going to come through the mulch. And you got a bigger problem than you had before. That's exactly the way we are in our own life. Until we get into our life, until we get dirty, 
until we get down, until we get serious, and we pull the weeds out of our life. In other words, deal with the sin in our life. Until we get serious, until we don't just look at the flowers and say, oh, it's beautiful. We have weeds, and those weeds are going to choke out the flowers and the fruit of our life. And we say, why? Why don't I have fruit in my life? Why is it that it seems like every other week or every other month or every other year I have the same problem within my life? Is because we want the fruit, but we don't want to do the work. We want it to be a beautiful flower garden that everybody comes in and says, oh, your life or your flower garden is beautiful. But we don't want to get down, and we don't want to get dirty, and we don't want to go through the pain of pulling the weeds. It's hard. That's why my old man made me do it. He didn't want to get down in the dirt. He wanted to teach me a lesson of saying, to have a garden, it takes work. In anything in our life, if we want success, it takes work. You can't just have something. You're never just going to have fruit until you take care of the weeds. And that's exactly what Galatians chapter 5 is telling us about. Galatians chapter 5 is telling us that I want to give you freedom. But in order to have freedom, it takes work. And you cannot have the fruit until you do the work. But let me tell you, it's not your work. It's the Holy Spirit's job within our life. So often in church, what we do is we want to have a beautiful life and we want everything to look good. But sometimes we don't understand how. Our lives look like they're in chaos. And we look at a flower bed of our life and we say, oh, it's too much. I don't know if I want to pull those weeds. I don't know if I want to go through the pain. I don't know if I want to go through all the agony and, and the understanding of, of it takes pain sometimes to pull the weeds within our life. But we look at somebody else's flower garden, somebody else's life, and they look like they have it all together. They look like they have every answer. But the difference is maybe they just pulled their weeds. Maybe they got serious about their life in a very difficult time within their life. And they say, you know what? I can't have what I really want to have and not do the work that I really need to do. So in your life and in my life, the weeds or the sin need to be pulled. Now, I don't know what your weeds would be. I know what my weeds are. And I know that sometimes it's very difficult. But I want to know this question, or this statement. If we have not pulled our weeds in our sinful nature, how could we ever expect a beautiful garden to flow within our life? How do we expect that to take place? Because you could come in here and you can talk about what God has done within your life. And all of a sudden, we see a weed pop up and we have to deal with that weed. So, in Galatians chapter 5, he tells us some stories and and he tells us what we need to do. The first thing I want to ask you is, why do we do what we do? Why do I want to do something, but yet I don't do it? And why the thing that I want, I cannot achieve? I, I want a beautiful garden. I want to produce fruit. But why can't I produce fruit? In Galatians chapter 5, verse 17, it says this. For the flesh lusts against the spirit... And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that you wish. There's a battle going on. And the battle is the flesh and the spirit. The thing that I want is God's working within my life. But the thing that I do is the flesh. And it hurts. But sometimes if we do not pull the weeds of our flesh... We will not have the spirit within our life. Let me read the entire text, if I could, in Galatians chapter 5. Now the works of the flesh are evident. And he's just saying, guys, these are the weeds. And until you pull the weeds, you'll never have the fruit. But listen to the weeds. Listen to your weed. And sometimes it may not be listed here, but at the end it says, and the like. In other words, I may not list your weed or your sin. It doesn't mean that you can play with your sin. 
That means if your weed is choking out the fruit that God wants to have in your life, you have to deal with that weed. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness. Also I told you in times past that those things who practice will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. There's a whole lot more of the weed than there are of the fruit. But the evidence of the fruit is the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, the gentleness, and the meekness, and the temperance. I want the fruit. But just because I have the fruit doesn't mean that I don't have to deal with the weed. That means I could see some fruit, but I have the fruit. And just because I have some fruit doesn't mean I don't need to go over and to de-weed my life. So, I do a lot of counseling. <laughs> some are fun and some are not. But let me tell you an illustration. A husband and wife come into the office and they say, we are just flat out of love. But I want love. I want to love him. And I want to love her. They desire to love. So in counseling, I don't just say, well, God bless you, love each other. And love is a verb, just go love and everything's great. And, and so when we get into counseling, we find out that love is a fruit. But you're not going to have love as a fruit until you do what? Get rid of the weeds. You desire love, yes. But I don't have the magic pill to say, okay, take two pills every day and you're going to love him and you're going to love her and everything's going to be wonderful. My magic pill is, okay, this is what you desire? You desire love? Well, let's do this. Let's get into the flower garden and start de-weeding your life. Let's talk about lust. Let's talk about addictions. Let's talk about the books that you read and the videos you watch. Let's talk about the things that are clogging up your life that you cannot have love because you have not de-weeded your bed. Often, we water our flower beds. We try to get it to grow. In other words, we come to church and we read the Bible and we get on right now videos and we watch videos and we try to learn everything that we can about life. And the same thing that you use in the water of the fruit, you're also doing what with the weeds? You're watering the weeds. And the more you water weeds, the more the weeds are going to grow. Oh, the fruit may grow as well, but what happens is the weeds choke out the fruit and you're trying to do good. You're trying to come to church. You're trying to go to counseling. You want good things. But until we get serious about the weeds of our life, we will never be able to have the fruit that we desire. We'll never have the life that we want. Pulling weeds simply means we need to confess and repent of some of our sins. And when we do see the sin coming up, the flesh coming up, we can't just say, oh, it'll be okay. No. It won't be okay. We need to have a bottle of Roundup in our back pocket sometimes. And we need to get rid of the weed as soon as we see the weed within our life. Pulling weeds are tough. Sometimes it takes a dedication. Sometimes it takes work. I was at the gym working out last week. Maybe it wasn't last week. Maybe it was a little time ago. But I was at the gym busting muscles all over the place. Um, and I was on the bicycle, and, and if you've been to the Y and you're on the bicycle, you, you, they have these windows, and you're sitting there, you're watching the windows, and I've been working out for a good three hours straight, put in, you know, thousand calorie burning time, and, and I was sitting there, and I was watching this guy get out of his car, and he got out of his car, and he put his gym bag out of his car, but he reached back into his car, and he got this cup out of, out of his car, and he started eating out of a Dairy Queen Blizzard cup. And he was chowing down on this blizzard. He, he was a big boy. I was smaller than him, so I could say he was a big boy. But he was at the gym, but he was eating a blizzard. And guess what he's going to get down? He's going to get upset. He's going to get upset at his trainer. And he's going to say, I'm not losing weight. 
but I come to the gym. Why can't I lose weight? Because I'm coming to the gym, I'm working out, but on the way in, he's eating a blizzard. On the way out, he's eating a blizzard. Just because you go to the gym doesn't mean that you're going to lose weight, right? Just because you come to church doesn't mean that you're going to be fruitful. It is the underlying issue. Am I pulling weeds or am I going through the motion? Just because you go to the gym doesn't mean that you're going to lose weight. It is far easier to get upset than to get serious. It's far easier to say, why am not I growing, than to say, I need to figure out why I'm not growing. It's easier to talk to your trainer and get upset at him because you're not gaining your strength, but you're still gaining weight. Why is it? Why is it that what I'm going through is because there's a battle going on. And that battle that's going on is the flesh and the spirit. And the Bible says they are contrary. What that means is they are opposites. They hate each other. And as soon as you try to grow your spirit, the flesh is going to get upset. And it's going to cause all kinds of problems. Okay, so what are the weeds of sinful nature and how do I get rid of them so the fruit can grow? What are the weeds? What are the weeds? We talked about the flesh how, how can I get rid of them? How can I just deal with life? Let's list them again. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and are the like. Of which I tell you beforehand, as I have told you also in times past, that you cannot practice these things. There's a lot of sin. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery. If it feels good, just do it. Idolatry, whether it's your career or your possessions or even another person. But here's where it gets down. I understand those. But it gets down to maybe where the rubber hits the road. And the simple things that, why would this harm me? Hatred. Hating people, which is the opposite of not forgiving. Discord, jealousy, fits of rage, ambition, envy, murder, drunkenness, and the like. How do I get rid of that? I've tried so hard, but I struggle in those areas. But let me tell you the secret. You cannot. You cannot get rid of it. It has to be through the power of the Holy Spirit. When you try, you fail. But when we say, Lord, I need your help, you can succeed. But the only way that we can look at what we can do is we can be honest with God. The righteous approach, okay, let's look at the church approach. You come to the church, and the church will say, if you want fruit, get rid of your sin. There's nothing wrong with that. I deal with the sin, understand the sin, but the problem is when we deal with sin in the flesh, what we become is self-righteous, self-sanctification. I can do this myself, and if you do it yourself, we work, we work, we work, we work, we work, we work, and I don't know about you, but I've been on a thousand diets in my life, and I can go on a diet for about three weeks, and I can lose about 15 pounds, but you know what? After about three weeks, I say, oh, I am sick and tired of this diet. I need a Dr. Pepper. Somebody give me an amen. amen. Our spiritual life is the same thing. When we try to do right and we do it in our own flesh, I can do it for a while, but I get tired. Sometimes I trip up. Sometimes I fail. But in our spiritual life, like when we get on our knees before God, say, Lord, I need you. The Bible says, die daily to yourself. In other words, I have to say, Lord, I can't do this. The animosity, the hatred, the jealousies, the ambitions, the envies, the stress, the discord. Lord, I need your help. And on a daily basis, before you start your day, that's a spiritual maturity of saying, Lord, I need you. You can't do it on your own. 
He would go to churches after churches after churches that point their finger and tell you, you should do this or you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do this. And you walk out of church and you're feeling guilty because what he says you should do, I'm trying but I fail. So I live in a guilt and what I do and I live in guilt, I just try to hide my weeds. I put my mulch over my weeds and I come into church and what the pastor said I should do, it looks like I've done it. <laughs> my life is perfect. Everything's great. And my flower bed looks wonderful because that's what he told me I should do. But just hiding our sin in order to look good is a failure personally. Self-sanctification. We cannot be sanctified in the flesh. What we have to do is allow God to work within our life. And if it says this in Galatians chapter 5, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The goal is walking in the Spirit, step by step with the Spirit. Now, uh, I, I, I couldn't play an instrument if I, if I needed to. I tried to play the saxophone in junior high, and they kicked me out of the band. I mean, it was terrible. But you know what's really neat is going to high school football games. At halftime of those games, the marching band. It's unique to see Hundreds of people marching in sync, making a design and doing certain things, playing instruments, walking in step with somebody else in unison. It's a unique thing. And that's exactly what Paul is telling us what we need to do to walk in the Spirit is to be in sync with what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. And it takes work. They don't just get out there on Friday afternoon at 5 o'clock and say, okay, let's do this. The marching band is out practicing for months before the first halftime show. And walk in the fruit of the Spirit is this. Lord, I need your help. Lord, train me. Lord, help me. Lord, equip me. It's not by rules. It's not by regulation. It's not by trying harder. It's not by going to church more. It's not by giving more money. It's by walking in the Spirit and letting the Holy Spirit tell you what you need to pull what you need to do. Early on, uh, the religious leaders of the day, uh, they put a lot of rules and regulations on the temple. And Jesus came in and he changed the rules. And it wasn't about rules and regulations, it was about grace and by faith. And there was a group of people that came into the church that they loved Jesus and they were called Judaizers. And the Judaizers that came into the church says, we love Jesus, but we still have some form of the old religion. So what the Judaizers tried to tell the church is you're saved by grace through faith, but you have to do the rules. You have to continue the regulations. They love Jesus, but they wanted to add to faith works. And, and Paul said, don't listen to them. That's a false left. You cannot add to anything. Your faith is faith to give you saved. And what we do is we work by the Holy Spirit, not by works. Because if I'm saved, if I'm happy with Christ because of what I've done, I'm going to live a life of guilt instead of a life of freedom. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 3, it says this. And you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, and you now being made perfect by the flesh. In other words, you began... Understanding that the Spirit of God is going to keep you. But you're listening to other individuals that say, now do this and do this and do this. And if you do this, God will be happy with you. No, it only has to be through the power of the Holy Spirit. And if we live our life in the power of the Holy Spirit, allowing God to tell us the weeds that we need to pull in any area of our life, then the Holy Spirit can direct us. But here's what happens. Uh, I used to fly a lot and go overseas. And uh, one time I was in um, uh, Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur. And when I was in Malaysia, I, I was with a bunch of pastors. And there was a couple older guys with me. And, and Malaysia is like a gigantic airport. And uh, they were, and it was before you had wheels on all, your, on all your luggage. And here these old guys were trying to carry their, their luggage and they had to walk forever. I said, okay, guys, don't worry about it. You know, go ahead. So I, I had this piece of luggage over here, and I had this piece of luggage over here, and I had my own luggage, so I was walking through the airport, and I was, you know, 40 years old, skinny, I was, I, I, I could do it that back in those days, those old guys were walking, kind of like Al, you know, just walking real slow, trying to get to where they need to go, 
But it was when they had the, 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 the walking track where, it, what's called, the, the, the stairs that keep on moving, the escalator type thing, but it's flat. So I was trying to get on it, and, and they were single. And I couldn't fit on it, so, I, so I, I got it, and they were on, and they were going faster than me, and I was carrying all their luggage. I said, don't wait on me. I'll just wait for you at the end. And I was dying. I was dying. I was trying to keep up. I was trying to keep up. I couldn't keep up, and I was dying. And I was thinking about, when I was talking about self-sanctification, the Holy Spirit is this. It is the walking, moving escalator. That when we are full and carrying our load and we get tired, what the Holy Spirit is saying, just move over. Get on my track. Walk in my step. Let me give you the power. Let me give you the energy. Let me give you the focus. Let me do the work. Because you're going to get tired of carrying the load you're going to get tired of pulling your weeds. Let me take care of that. But what we need to do is be in sync and in step with the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the only way that it works. So, what does the power of the Holy Spirit look like? Let me give you a few points. And here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to go to the car when you leave here and say, that was a good sermon. I have no idea what he was talking about. He was passionate. But what in the world did he mean? That was fun. But I wasted my time. But some, sometimes when we talk about this topic, it goes over our head or we don't want to deal with reality. Because I'm asking you to do one thing. I'm asking you to get in step with the Holy Spirit within your life. I'm asking you to change some areas of your life. And when the weeds of sin step in, instead of just pulling the weed, say, Lord, I need you to help me pull that weed. Because if we pull the weed without the power of the Holy Spirit, the weed will come back. But when we pull the weed with the power of the Holy Spirit, understanding I do not want that sin in my life the Holy Spirit will convict us of that sin and he will guard us within that sin. What does the power of the Holy Spirit look like? The first thing is a continual awareness and constant prayer. Continual awareness. That means die daily. And that also means in Galatians chapter 5, verse 25, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. That means when I see something, I'm not afraid and I'm not ashamed to ask God to deal with that. I'm not going to wink at sin and I'm not going to play with sin. Bill Bright calls it this way. He calls it spiritual breathing. If I walk in the Spirit and if I understand what the Spirit is, here's what he says. Spiritual breathing. Exhale and inhale. Exhale. You breathe out and you repent of your sin the moment you become aware of it. You're breathing. I'm just going to exhale. I'm going to give up. I'm not going to give up life. I'm giving up that sin. I'm going to give it up and I'm going to repent of it. And I'm going to ask God to take it over. And I'm going to be aware of the sin within my life. And inhale. You breathe in and you're filled with the Holy Spirit. And surrender control over that sin to him. It's not your sin. I'm giving it to God. I'm going to deal with my sin. I'm going to ask God to pluck that sin without of my life. I'm going to be aware of that sin. I'm not going to wink at that sin. I'm going to be fully aware of everything that that sin has within my life. But so often, we are so used to that sin. We become aware of that sin. Our memory is of that sin. And because we've always done it the same way, sometimes we wink at that sin. Our, that's all we know. And sometimes what we know sometimes can hurt us. And sometimes when somebody tells us what we should do, after we have already been practiced what we should do, it, it gets monotonous to us. So that brings me, and I love, I love Pastor Al, but I'm going to use him as a personal illustration because he's so easy to use. Um, <laughs> Surely... I uh, got tired of Al going home after we play golf, and Al goes home and cries because he gets beat every time. And he, he's, 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 he's insecure about it. I understand that. But so, so Shirley and her son decided that we need to buy Pastor Al some 
new golf clubs. And do, do you like your new golf clubs? Okay, so that is true, right? They, she did buy you some new golf clubs because you did cry a lot. So, so, um, so Al, after getting these new golf clubs, he says, I'm going to go to a, a professional. I'm going to go to a PGA professional, and I'm going to learn a new golf swing because I, 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 the clubs clearly can't work. So if the clubs won't work, I need to probably learn some things. So he went to this club professional, and the club professional says, here's a bucket of balls. Go out and hit some balls. So the club professional was looking over at Al. He was trying to hit these golf balls, and he said, he said you've, you've played a lot, haven't you? And he said, yeah, I've been playing for quite a few years. He goes, I know. He said, the longer you've played, the harder it is going to be for me to correct your swing. <laughs> and that is a true statement. Because his stance was wrong, his hand was wrong, his grip was wrong, his swing was wrong. And that professional had to change his swing because his swing had been practiced for years. And the same thing within our life. Sometimes we have troubles within our life. And we go to a professional and we say this, I need help with my swing. And he looks at that and he says, your swing is off. Your grip is bad. Your tempo is wrong. I'm going to have to tear everything about you away so you can have a better golf swing. And sometimes you go to church and you hear a sermon that you don't want to hear. But because you want to get better, you have to learn it. And sometimes we have to deconstruct our life in certain areas in order to have a better life. In golf, it's called muscle memory. You can get into a swing and you, you get 20 things going. Okay, he told me to do this, 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 and this. So he's, oh. And then because he's trying to teach you a new swing, a new position, you get up the first few times, you're shaking the ball bad, right, Pastor Al? You shank the ball all the time. It's bad. I mean, you play with him. It's kind of embarrassing when he's trying to learn this new swing. But until he gets his muscle memory down, then his swing is going to be work. And in our life is this. When the Holy Spirit is convicting you of some of your stuff, don't go back to the old swing. Sometimes it's easy to go back to what you know instead of deal with what God wants you to do. And in the Holy Spirit, that's why he says, die daily to self. In those weeds, I have to pull that weed, and I can't go back to that weed. I can't just cover that weed up. Sometimes we have to change what God wants us to change. And sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes it's hard. But that's exactly what he wants us to do. And then it requires filtered thinking. It requires filtered thinking. It says this in Romans chapter 8. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the fruit of the Spirit, for to be car carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Sometimes what we think is going to come out in our life. What we think about is what we love. What we spend time with is who we become. Craig Massey said this, Two, nature, two natures beat within my breasts. The one is foul, the other is blessed. The one I love, the other I hate. But the one I feed will always dominate. Whatever we feed will dominate within our life. What do I put my focus on? What do I spend time with? Sometimes we enjoy watering our weeds. And then we get upset because the weeds choke out the fruit. And we need fruit within our life. But if we do not take care of the fruit, the weeds will dominate. I've said this, but I wonder. Sometimes um, when you're on a diet, they make you do a, a food count, right? My fit. And when I was serious... <laughs> A few years ago when I was serious, they made me document every intake of my food, every drink, every dessert. You know, I thought, you know what, if I eat a candy bar, I don't have to put a candy bar. It's only a stinking candy bar. But, you know, they make me put everything. And I thought, well, if, why, don't I, why don't I stop at 10 o'clock at night? 
I just won't document anything after 10, and I don't go to bed till 1, so I can have three hours. I mean, surely that won't make any difference. But on the journal, they wanted me to put down everything within my diet, everything that I eat. And, I, I, you know, when you dot and document that, there's a lot of calories that we take in, if we're honest. If you're, I mean, I'm always honest, but if you would be honest. But what if we did that with our spiritual journal? What if we documented our prayer? The Bible that we read? Acts of kindness that we gave? Would our spiritual diet be one pleasing to God? If we would do that with our diet, why don't we do that with our spirit? Because what we feed grows. If we diet off the spiritual, our spiritual will grow. But if we diet in the flesh, the flesh will grow. So here's what I have to do. I have to die to myself. I have to die to myself. In Galatians 5, 24, And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. I have to crucify the things that I want sometimes. When you're on a diet, sometimes you have to say, No. I shouldn't have that. And sometimes in the spirit, we have to die to ourselves and say no to that sin. I need to pull that weed and I need to give God that weed and God needs to convict me of that. And that needs to be something that I, that I, struggle, that I don't have to struggle with. This young man came to church and there was an old, older man uh, teaching his Sunday school class. And, and he was talking about crucifixion and talking about sin. And the young boy looked up to the older man and he said, he said, why is it so hard? Why is it so hard to live a life pleasing to God? Why I find myself sinning and I find myself always trying to always get ahead. And the old man looked at the young boy and he said, son, the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ didn't just happen. It was a journey. They beat him. They mocked him. They scourged him. It wasn't an easy process. My son, what Jesus went through for you is worth the journey that you're walking. When we get our mindset of what Christ really wants to do within our life, it's not a hard issue. It's, I need to understand my life, what Jesus did for me, is about him. The weeds that I need to pull whether it's in your marriage, whether it's in your finances, whether it's in your character, whether it's in your relationships, there's weeds in your life. That we look at those weeds and sometimes we like those weeds. We like those dandelions. We look across a dandelion field and, oh, that's pretty, but you know what? That is still a weed. And the Bible says sin may be pleasurable for a season. That means you may enjoy your weed. But that weed that you enjoy will sooner or later choke out the fruit that God wants to have within your life. It's our choice. Am I happy with the life of the flesh? With the weeds growing up? Or do I truly want the fruit that God wants to have within my life? Here's what we can't do. We just can't put mulch over our weeds. We just can't hide it. In church, that's what we do. We stick our head in the sand. We act like everything's wonderful. I've got my weeds covered. But then those weeds pop through. And somebody comes over or somebody sees our weeds and they're exposed we try to hide it, maybe pull a few just to make it look okay. But until we get serious with our life, until we get serious with the flower bed of my life, and I allow God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, to pull the weeds, and to allow God to convict me of my sin, those weeds are going to take over. That's what happens. We get discontent with God. We get discontent with the church. We get angry with ourselves. We get bitter towards my life because my life is in ruin. 
There's no joy. There's no peace. There's no long-suffering, no gentleness, no meekness, no temperance. There's absolutely nothing within my life that God is happy with. Why is that? It is because we're not pulling the weeds. Next week, we're going to talk about the fruit. When we pull the weeds, what do we gain? We gain the absolute blessings from God. Every one of us, we want a beautiful garden. <laughs> Every one of us want our life to be right. We want God to bless us. We want God's peace. In order to have the fruit, we have to do the work. And once we do the work, through the power of the Holy Spirit, the fruit is going to thrive within our life. So what's the challenge today? The challenge to be really serious and honest. We all have our weeds. Every one of us. Are you willing, through the power of the Holy Spirit, not self-sanctification, but the power of the Holy Spirit, to say, Lord, I need you to help me get rid of my weed. To get rid of it, to dye it, to pull it from its roots, and to get rid of it. And then, when we pull those weeds, we're going to allow the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit, to allow the fruit of the Spirit to take root within our life. And you will absolutely see a life well lived. Because the roots of bitterness and sin in the flesh are pulled. Because the power of the Holy Spirit has given you that ability to do that.